Hey everybody, welcome back to another weekly Bible study. Uh, we've been in a series called uh, Jesus Said to Do What? Where we're looking at different commands that Jesus has given. Uh, this is officially our fifth week. Now in the first week we looked at uh, a study that was just Jesus says if you love me, obey my commands. And that was at the heart of um, everything that we're looking at from here on out. We've been kind of going through the book uh, of Matthew, and that'll change a little bit as we get further on in a few weeks. But uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, the first command that we came across from Jesus is repent. Jesus calls us to repent, then he calls us to make disciples or to be fishers of men. Uh, Last week, we talked about rejoicing. Jesus' command for us to rejoice, even if we are persecuted in this world. And this week, we're moving just a few verses ahead to where we were from last week, and we're looking specifically at Matthew 5, 16. So this is the next command from Jesus, and really the passage uh, that we're looking at, we'll start in verse 14. And that command for this week is, let your light shine. So before we dig into the scripture and talk about what that means and how we apply it in our life, let's just have, go to our Father in a word of prayer. Father God, we are so grateful for your word, Lord. I pray that you would teach us, convict us, um, call us, Lord, show us how how to live uh, as your your word teaches, uh, Lord. As, um, Father, as we, we look on and we gather together even here online, uh, Lord, I pray that we would feel your, your presence and know that you are here with us, that you love us, uh, Lord, that you are a God who is present, a God that is loving, uh, a God that is forgiving, but also a God uh, who calls us to righteousness, uh, Lord, a God who who calls us to to evangelize and, and share our faith with others, Lord. And so, Father, I pray that uh, you would just fill us up with your strength, with your power, with your boldness, uh, Lord, as we just grow in you. Uh, Father, I pray that you would continue just to mold us and make us into the image of Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Hey, so let's jump right into the scriptures. Matthew five fourteen to 16 says this, You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. But they put it on a stand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So today we're looking at that command. So Jesus specifically says, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Now, this is kind of a command uh, that has a lot of context to it. And you might initially be thinking to yourself um, that in reading that command, let your light shine, that, you know, well, you know, can't you be a little bit uh, arrogant or can't See, can't things seem to kind of be all about me if I'm wanting everybody else to see the good things that I do? And, and doesn't that go against uh, what God teaches elsewhere in the scripture? And I would answer, yes, all of those things are true. And those are some of the things that we need to look at. But also, you know, Jesus doesn't teach here that you just have to do every single little thing in secret. That's not the emphasis that we, we only do these good things uh, hidden all the time and anonymous, anonymously and, and nobody ever sees what, what is happening. That's not the emphasis. Jesus does say, let your light shine. He says, you know, at the beginning of that passage, um, a city on a hill can't be hidden, right? A city on a hill can't be hidden. And that's essentially what we are. We are these lights out in the world. And the fact that we are in the world, just like a city on a hilltop is People are around it. They may not even be looking for it, but they still see the light shining. And so the fact that we live uh, in the world is just all part of that. And so I want to emphasize that this first main point that Jesus does say, let your light shine before others, right? Other people are going to notice. Other people are going to see your good works. Uh, You're called to do good works out in public, right? With other people, to and for other people. Those are all things that Jesus is specifically uh, talking about that, that we should be doing as believers in Christ. And, and this one of, this is one of those things that is, 
it's kind of like, well, yeah, that's a, that's a no-brainer, right? If we're following Jesus and we're trying to be uh, godly in this world and we're trying to, to follow him, we're trying to love others as we love ourselves, obviously we're going to do good things for them. And the fact is, is that when those things happen, we're, we're not just called, once again, to do those in secret. We're called to do those in a lot of circumstances to a lot of different people, a, a lot of different locations. Uh, it's going to get noticed. Now, I do want to go back and talk about some of those concerns that maybe you have that, you know, we can't be arrogant or haughty or self-centered or egotistical, you know, when we're doing things. And, you know, Jesus actually teaches right on that very thing. And so if you even just maybe flip one page over in your Bible or, or one, one chapter uh, over even, Jesus says this in chapter 6 and verse 1 of the Gospel of, of Matthew. Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. So now you look at these two passages, uh, let your light shine and beware of practicing your righteousness before other people. And, and they seem to be a little bit contradictory. And, and you might ask yourself, well, that, how do, what am I supposed to do then? Like, do I need to walk on eggshells anytime I do something good just to make sure I'm, I'm not, you know, being in front of others too much, but I'm also called to do good things in front of others. Where is the balance in this? And I think the balance for this is right in the context uh, here in Matthew chapter 6, uh, and particularly even in verse 1. You know, Jesus says, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people. Why? In order to be seen by them. In order to be seen by them. So if you're doing good things with an emphasis of getting noticed or um, getting rewarded or people having a higher view of you uh, or a little bit of your egotism, right? You, you want yourself to be the center of what's happening. Those are the things that we're called not to do. And Jesus actually uses a very um, kind of public example here of when you give to somebody who is needy. He says, you know, don't sound the trumpets. Don't show, hey, everybody, look what I'm doing. Um, but we are called to give to the needy. And sometimes that might be helping somebody out. I've been in a circumstance where somebody was checking out at a grocery store and was kind of fumbling through dollar bills and change, uh, counting, you know, quarters and dimes and nickels to add up to the dollars that they needed. And they thought they had enough and they didn't. So for me to go ahead and give a couple extra dollars or whatever was needed to help them pay for it, they're going to see it. The cashier is going to see it. There might be somebody behind me standing in line, right? And so, but am I supposed to not do that then? No, I, I want to help somebody that's needy and I want them to know um, that I love them. And there's no expectation for them to give anything back to me in, in return. And I, I want them to see that, um, you know, I'm, I'm a godly person and emphasize that, it, you know, it's because of Jesus that I'm, I'm doing good things if I have the chance to, to share with them. But other people are going to see. But what I'm not going to do is, um, you know, get on Facebook and do a video of me helping myself to pay them so that I get likes on my social media. You see, there's a big difference there between people acknowledging and recognizing me and looking at what I'm doing and, and seeking reward for myself versus just doing something for somebody that's in the midst of others. I'm not seeking any recognition in that. And that's one area of our lives that I think, you know, we can look at the scripture and, and know we need to be very careful of. Because so many times uh, with, you know, social media, whether that's, you know, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram or, or anything like that, you know, it, it, it can become especially difficult. Um, it, it's very hard to post something good on social media and not have it be about you specifically seeking after likes. But that, I think, is the emphasis. Are you doing something? Are you showing something? Are you in public? Are you online with the emphasis that people see you? 
And that right there is going to be the determining factor. What is your motivation? Why are you doing something good? And especially if you're going to post something online. So it, it's one thing to say, you know, I want to encourage people to, you know, donate to a cause or help out uh, with a ministry or, you know, I want to show, you know, people in the community some of the good things that are happening so that they know that they can come and get help as well, right? All of those things are based on the other people. They're based on glorifying God. They're not based on me getting recognition and me getting likes. And so that's the thing that I think we really just need to be uh, careful about um, as we're doing good works before others. I would also say that the emphasis on um, these good works is the glory of God, is the glory of God. So to jump back to our initial passage there in Matthew 5, um, verse 16 specifically says, right, this is our key verse for this study, in the same way let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. So the purpose of kind of these good works and the world seeing these good works is so that God gets glory. And so that God gets glory. We're not doing good things just for the sake of being good people or for doing good things in this world, but with an emphasis on God's glory. In other words, there should be a spiritual meaning behind the good things that we do. There should be a spiritual meaning behind a lot of the good things that we do. Now, that's not always going to be the case, right? Our neighbor might ask for, you know, help carrying something into the house, and we go over and we help them carry something. But in truth be told, lots of people do things like that, right? Jesus even says uh, as much here in the Gospel of Matthew, you know, that even, even Gentiles and tax collectors uh, show love to those that love them, right? Do good things for those that do good things to them, right? People care and do things for, for their friends, like giving rides. But if what we're doing doesn't have any spiritual meaning behind it, I realize, once again, that some of the things we do uh, aren't going to necessarily have uh, spiritual meaning behind it. But there should be a lot of good things that we do that do have a spiritual meaning behind them. So now for some of those, that would include things like uh, prayer. Uh, prayer is one of the best ways that you can do something good for somebody else. You can do it without emphasizing, hey, everybody, look at me. And it has a spiritual emphasis. And you know what? I think prayer is okay uh, in the middle of, of a store or at somebody else's house, or out in public. Now, you don't want to do it as a giant display where you stand up in front of everybody and say, hey, look, yeah, everybody, I'm going to pray for this person. You, you're, not, you're not calling people to a, a stage. You're not sounding a trumpet, as Jesus says. And in all honesty, prayer is one of the next things that Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 6 when he is warning that it can't be about recognition about yourself. Right? He talks about prayer. Uh, verse 5 of chapter 6, he says, And when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in synagogues and at street, street corners that they may be seen by others. So don't go and pray to be seen by others, but is it okay to pray in public? Yes. If somebody needs prayer or they're struggling or they need somebody to talk to, you can walk over to the side of the store, right? You can give them a hug. You can sit there and pray for them that they know that you are connected with God, that you're speaking to the almighty creator of the universe, right? Mention Christ in your prayer and his forgiving power, right? And his cleansing of our sins and his newness of life. You can do all those things in prayer. Do something good for somebody. Be a listening ear. Show them that you care and also connect it spiritually. And so prayer is one of the really good things that we can do for other people, that we can let our light shine. And you know what's probably going to happen, especially if if we pray some for somebody, you know, off to the side, it could be a church, it could be at a store, it could be a family member's house, right? They're going to notice that we're praying for that person, but they may not even be able to hear us. But when they see that, they recognize that something spiritual there is happening and, and this person really cares about the other person. And in doing so, they God is the one that gets the glory. 
They recognize and see that there is a spiritual meaning tied to this good thing that is happening. And so that has to be uh, the emphasis. And Jesus goes on and, and talks about fasting as well. And in fact, Pastor, Pastor Jerry has been preaching on, on some of these things. But when we do these things, the emphasis should be on God and not just merely an emphasis on ourselves. And so we can't look to seek attention in the midst of it. But, you know, the emphasis on this, that let your light shine. So the couple of disclaimers, let's kind of uh, wrap this up and put it in a neat little, little box. We are called, commanded by Jesus to let our light shine before others. But that light shining cannot be self-seeking. It cannot be about seeking attention or getting notice for ourselves. The emphasis needs to be on God's glorification. And so if you wrap that all up, that to let our light shine before others, right, it, it needs to have a spiritual meaning so that God gets the glory. And the truth is, is that for a lot of us, we probably just need to do more good works, Right? So many of us look at ourselves and, and you know, we go, oh, we're good people. We help out when we need to and, and everything else. But is God getting glory and are we getting credit in those circumstances? So the more that, that we get credit from the world and seek credit from the world, right, the more that we need to reflect on what we're doing uh, spiritually, especially if we're yearning for that. If we're seeking and yearning after uh, getting getting attention and, and getting noticed for the good things we do, you know, that that's... Uh, that's rough. That's not what, what God's intention is. Our intention should be that uh, God's reward is enough for us. And, and, and honestly, um, that's exactly that's exactly what uh, Jesus says as well uh, there in verse 6, right? You're giving, uh, or chapter 6, excuse me, in verse 4, right? That your giving may be in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. That a reward comes from God in heaven. We don't need a reward from people on earth. And so we can't be seeking that, but we need to make things more spiritual. And I think that's what happens to a lot of us, uh, even Christians and even in church, right? Is we know that we, we should do good things for other people. We know we should be helpers and serve other people and all of those type of things. We need to be careful that we're not seeking attention for ourselves, but also we need to ensure that God is, is getting glory, right? Good things happen all the time. A lot of people in this world think they are good people, but there's nothing in that goodness that glorifies God. And so when we get this command from Jesus to let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to God who is in heaven, we need to make sure that we have spiritual meaning tied um, with our good works and what we do. And if we're not doing enough good works that do have uh, some type of spiritual interest, um, that, that, that do connect people with the church body or, or do bring up Christ or, or do show spiritual meaning, that, that we need to emphasize those things more in our good works. And honestly, we do all this out of a love for people. We do this out of a love for people. You know, I have often said and preached many times that the greatest love, the best thing we can ever do for anybody else is to share Jesus Christ with them. Because in sharing Jesus Christ, they have a chance to meet the eternal God, creator of the universe, and to have an eternity spent with him, uh, an eternity in paradise. And there is nothing better that we could do for anyone else. And so all other good things that happen on earth do not compare uh, with the goodness that comes with giving God glory and sharing Christ with somebody. So that would be my encouragement to you, church, is, is not just to continue to doing good, but make sure that you're doing something good. And when you do good things, that there's a way that God can be glorified in what you're doing. Now, that's not going to be the case with everything, but it certainly can be the case in more of the things that we do. Now, I'd love to hear you. If you have opinions on some of the things that we can do to tie spiritual meaning to our good works, I'd love to hear about them. Uh, please leave a comment uh, below even in this video. Feel free to email us here at the church. And of course, you can always call or stop by our office uh, if you need anything. We'd love to pray with you or talk with you about Christ uh, and our church. Uh, and so let me just pray for you uh, as we close uh, this study. Father God, I thank you for your word, Lord. And as we seek to do good in this world, which 
Uh, why wouldn't we? We want this world to be a better place, Lord. Uh, we know that you, you, Lord, give ultimate goodness and meaning behind all things. And so, Father, as we go out and we do good works in, the, in this world, help us to not be um, seeking, help us not to seek attention. Help us not to be focused on ourselves or, or being seen by others, Lord, but help us just to love others and want to do good for them uh, for your sake, Lord. Uh, also help us to make you the center of all those things. When we do good works, we have a purpose behind them, and that is that you would be seen, that you would be glorified, and people would come to you through Christ Jesus. Uh, Lord, we love you, and I just pray that if anybody watching, uh, Lord, needs to meet Jesus, that, uh, Lord, they would feel your presence, and, uh, Father, that we would be able to, to help them and speak to them and, and share your truth with them. I pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, guys, thanks for joining me uh, for another weekly Bible study. I uh, hope to see you on Sunday. If not, I'll see you next Wednesday online. Have a great day, everybody.